Hello, uh, welcome back to another quick video. Um, we are looking at another little sour gas to natural gas boiler today, or crude oil to natural gas boiler, should I say. Uh, I'm going to try and make this a bit quicker than the previous video, so if I'm skipping a few steps, it's because we've probably mentioned these builds already in previous videos, so I'll have little links up here, uh, little cards for you to click to link to those videos. Uh, but yeah, basically just to explain, this is a smaller, uh, more energy efficient, and less output than the previous sour gas boiler. Um, I'm going to call this the boom box because it looks a bit like a boom box from the 80s, I suppose. But anyway, the idea of this build today, I got quite a lot of feedback from the previous build, the sour gas tard that I will leave a link up here, um, that it was A, too big, B, too much output, C, too hard to build in single player, um, and D, used a lot of space materials. And I, I kind of agree with a lot of those things in fairness. It was more of a, um, a proof of concept, really. It was a build I hadn't played with, and I quite wanted to have just a little nosy with it. Um, so this build today is all about making it smaller, more energy efficient, um, and getting a reasonable throughput that can be scaled up or down, depending on what you're trying to do, um, but really getting us a, a compact little build that we can easily build in survival without any problems. This is pretty straightforward to build in terms of access um, and uses a lot of ceramic instead of insulate. Like a lot of, a lot of these builds we're seeing now, people are just using insulation for everything, which is kind of unrealistic. Um, the only downside of this build, I will point out before we go any further, we do use quite a lot of super coolant. Super coolant is one of those materials that can be acquired pretty easily, depending on what your first couple of planets are in terms of space. Uh, if you didn't have super coolant, you can use um, other materials like petroleum. You just need to be a bit more conscious of your boiling temperatures in your pipes. But realistically, the build runs pretty cool for the most part. Around here, we're 300 degrees, 200 degrees. Um, so yeah, most of the, the area where our piping is actually running is actually quite cool. Anyway, that's all the disclaimers and nonsense aside. Let me just explain what we're looking at here. So uh, it's the similar principle to what we were looking at previously on the last video. We have a oil boiling room here, which takes our crude oil from my little supply over here, dumps it through this vent um, and boils it into petroleum. Okay. The petroleum then can drop down through this little shaft here. We've got this little sort of an airlock liquid lock just to stop any sour gas from bubbling up. Uh, and that dumps down onto our second aqua tuna. And this is the aqua tuna that then boils the petroleum into sour gas. And that's why we've got all this sour gas sat here. Okay. Now, these rooms are uh, sort of insulated from each other. So we have a vacuum airlock here. And if we look at the thermal overlay, you can actually see behind here that it is actually a vacuum. This is mostly so I can keep all the heat in here until it's ready to be diffused into the build. Reason being, this aqua tuna is working its balls off trying to make me sour gas. So if I'm leaching that heat out into this room, it's going to slow this process down. So I want this to be able to cook up my petroleum, which is why I've got this vacuum here. And the automation for this is a little bit long-winded, but I will attach the save file to you and have a look at it. Um, this automation is kind of inspired by uh, Octiaba um, on the clay forums, and I'll make a little link to that thread as well. Probably one of the most useful threads on the clay forums, the uh, useful automation gadgets thread. Um, in essence, what this basically does is shuts these two outer doors, then closes the middle door, and then reopens it so it creates a vacuum. Um, and that's activated by these sensors. But regardless, what basically happens here, when we need some gas in the room, these sensors here, these, these Atmos sensors are going to detect the pressure in the room. If we are below 6 kilos, um, then this airlock will, will open here and release some of this sour gas into the build. Okay. If it goes even further below that, i.e. 3 kilos, we're going to shut the whole build down and let this room build up again. That generally means we've run out of sour gas, so this room needs to cook up. Okay. Now, after that, we've got a very simple um, uh, mechanized pump here, which is basically going to take the gas from this room up to there. So the automation on this couldn't be easy. We've got a load of buffer gates and some clock sensors. Okay. The top door here is on a knock gate, so if we do get a signal, this door shuts. All these other doors will then close on a buffer, and you can actually see this, this closing right now. It's going to work its way up here. Um, that pushes the gas all the way to the top, and this last door here is connected with a filter gate and a knock gate to these bottom sets of doors. So the second to last door, we run a cable through a filter and a knock gate to control these bottom doors. And you can actually see that happening now. When this toggles out, these doors will open. There we go. And then when the next signal comes through, you'll see in a second, this top door will shut. These doors will all open. A load of gas can flood up here. Shortly after, these doors will close. 
and then this all gets pumped up to the top and by the time the gas reaches up here this is open and so on so that pumps our gas up to this top chamber here and by the time it gets here it's about 200 degrees it then hits a cooling radiator and this is a cooling radiator that's coming from our aqua tuners which i'll show you in a moment um which then literally pretty much instantly condenses our sour gas to liquid methane all right and a liquid methane gets collected down here and then down in the bottom we have a little pump that collects the liquid methane and sends it up this pipe into this little room here and at the moment it's empty and you'll see the first pump come through in a moment i've just vacuumed this out for you so you can see what happens so it's it's pretty straightforward in terms of builds that we've used on the previous videos we're now pumping some of the liquid methane as you can see that'll come up to here hit this little hot plate that's above the uh, the steam turbine and we get loads of natural gas boiling away um, and that's it basically guys, the build is very straightforward. I wanted to try and make a build that was more energy efficient, that was a bit smaller. Um, this build actually only consumes, if we look at the reports, it consumes between, um, because it does fluctuate a little bit, it consumes between 500 and 600 kilojoules a day. So I ran uh, for about 20 cycles before um, and worked out the averages. It, it, it's about a 550 kilojoule per cycle use. Now, a natural gas generator running for an entire cycle will give you 480 kilojoules. So it's just over one natural gas gen um, to, sorry, generator, not geyser. It's just over one natural gas generator will power the whole build. And it gives us enough gas to power 10 natural gas generators. So you're getting nine surplus generators, if you like, uh, which is quite a lot of power for free. Um, it does consume a little bit of oil, but again, um, the amount of natural gas that we get paired with the amount of carbon dioxide we get from our natural gas gens and the polluted water that we get, it, it's a really great build. And it's one that I'm really enjoying playing with at the minute and one that I am going to build in my next uh, survival base. Now, just to show you a quick bit of the plumbing, um, as I mentioned, a lot of the piping in this build is actually with ceramic. So I've tried to make as much of the piping out of ceramic as possible. All of this will be ceramic up here. The only exception is a couple of the bits of piping around the aqua tuna I've built out of insulation. You can build them out of ceramic. You'll just notice that you lose a bit of your heat from your petroleum and your oil um, into the pipes. It does bleed very slightly into your pipes. Uh, so I've used like literally four pieces of insulation basically here and probably used a little bit up here as well. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's ceramic as you can see. Um, just because it, it, it's cheap and easy to get. And it's a very good material as well. I do also have a little loop in the steam turbine room itself. I should probably explain that, uh, which then goes down into this room. And all the radiant piping I've made out of gold, there's nothing built out of thermium apart from these two aqua tuners up here. So it is, there is still, a, you know, a bit of space age materials in here, but thermium is very easy to make. You can actually multiply your thermium by doing the recipe with niobium and tungsten. You can make quite a lot of thermium in fairness. Um, it's more the super coolant that you need to grind in order to do this build. But as I mentioned, you could use petroleum. Uh, there's nothing in this build that actually goes above any sort of crazy temperatures that would boil petroleum in your pipes. It would just be slightly less efficient. Um, so as I say, I'll attach the save file so you can have a play. Um, it's a cracking little build. I'm calling it the Boombox, as I say. I think that's, I think that's a fairly appropriate name. Um, and again, I'll attach some links to the other videos that will explain like the petroleum build and our aqua tuna setup up here. But yeah, guys, as ever, have a play. See what you make of this. Uh, if you've got any improvements or any tweaks, any refinements, do let me know. Share me your builds, your similar setups. I'm always interested to see what everybody else is working on as well. Uh, so yeah, much love, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.